Inexperienced, poorly trained and underfed North Korean troops have been sent to Russia to fight in the war against Ukraine, The Guardian reports. After weeks of speculation, NATO and the Pentagon have confirmed that some 10,000 North Korean troops are already in Russia, particularly near the Ukrainian border at Kursk, where they could be deployed in the coming days. As U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken noted, Russia has been training them in artillery, drones and infantry operations, preparing them for frontline combat. While their participation will help Russia avoid mobilization, experts doubt the effectiveness of these units due to their lack of experience. The soldiers, most of whom are young people under 20, are not used to fighting on the plains and will fight in uniforms with Russian symbols that are little known to them. North Korean soldiers previously fought only in the Korean War in the 1950s and in recent years have provided military assistance to other countries as consultants. Now they are equipped with Russian weapons, including machine guns, mortars and sniper rifles. Analysts say it is a historic move for North Korea, which has never sent large ground forces abroad before. However, as An Chang-il, a former North Korean military officer noted, Kim Jong-un is taking a risk. If there are not many casualties, he will get what he wants to a certain extent. But things will change dramatically if many of his soldiers die in battle. For many North Koreans, fighting in Russia is a chance for pride and an opportunity to earn money to support their families, according to South Korean intelligence, have been moved to undisclosed locations to ensure the confidentiality of the deployment. Choi Jong-hoon, a former army officer who now leads an activist group in Seoul, misses his compatriots whom he views as cannon fodder. They will be sent to the most dangerous positions. I am sure that most of them will die. The coming weeks will show whether Russia will live up to its hopes for a military unit that has more weaknesses than real advantages in a conflict. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Tuesday received diplomatic credentials from several dozens of newly appointed foreign ambassadors during a special ceremony in Moscow. Addressing ambassadors of Western countries, including Japan, Canada, Italy, and Spain, Putin said that cooperation at regional and international levels has been frozen but Russia remains committed to mutually beneficial cooperation and does not seek confrontation. As for our country, it is open to mutually beneficial cooperation with all states without exception on the principles of equality, non-interference in internal affairs, and strict observance of international law, Putin said. Putin also addressed the newly appointed Israeli ambassador saying, Russia is making active efforts to prevent the Palestinian-Israeli conflict from escalating into a major war in the Middle East. The key condition for restoring peace in the region is the implementation of the two-state formula approved by the resolutions of the UN Security Council and General Assembly, Putin added. Не открою секрета, если скажу, что двусторонние контакты между нашими странами сведены к минимуму, как по линии официальных, так и деловых и общественных кругов. Заморожено взаимодействие по важным международным и региональным вопросам. Между тем, Россия всегда была и остается приверженной логике взаимовыгодного сотрудничества и не стремится к конфронтации. Хочется верить что рациональный, взвешенный взгляд на сотрудничество с Россией вновь возобладает. Россия активно участвует в международной жизни. Что касается нашей страны, то она открыта для взаимовыгодного сотрудничества со всеми, без исключения государствами, на принципах равноправия, 
невмешательства во внутренние дела и неукоснительного соблюдения международного права. Поскольку здесь присутствует посол государства Израиль, скажу, что Россия прилагает активные усилия, чтобы не дать нынешнему обострению Палестино-Израильского конфликта перерасти в большую войну на Ближнем Востоке. Убеждены, что вернуть стороны на путь примирения, добиться устойчивого и долгосрочного урегулирования можно только на общепризнанной международно-правовой основе. И ключевым условием для восстановления мира в регионе является реализация формулы двух государств, одобренной резолюциями Совета безопасности и Генеральной ассамблеи ООН.